So, this video has popped up in my YouTube feed lately, and if you haven't watched it, you might want to check it out. To make it brief, an undetectable computer vision tool is floating around, which can be used almost as a godly aim assist in any first person shooter. Obtaining this sheet seems quite difficult at the moment, seeing as it was paid in the video, along with the attempted eradication from the internet by game companies. Now I don't want to be that dude who ruins the FPS experience, but I tried to recreate it. I'm obviously not going to be trying this in an online or multiplayer game, so I assure you not, no randoms were uh, messed around with. I chose one of the few games that abuse the tool more than the tool abuses it, Doom Eternal. Using aimbot in Doom is not only incredibly difficult due to the pace and high default motion blur, but it would probably prove useless in most situations and desecrate one of the most satisfying FPS campaigns in the genre. Please don't use in battle mode. The other challenge in the video is the hardware requirements. While there's probably people with access to two computers and a capture card, I'm not exactly one of them, so we're going to be trying uh, everything on one machine. To run both a modern game and modern computer vision, you'd probably need a really high-end computer and it would still completely max out your CPU usage. Since I'm running a GTX 1660 and 9600, good but not good enough, I'm just going to hope that my PC doesn't explode. Now that we've established just how pointless trying this yourself would be, let's get into how this, while not fully optimized, is possible with just 32 lines of Python code. Making an aimbot is as simple as detecting enemies and snapping the cursor to the coordinates of the enemy. Wait, why did I say simple? Due to the computing limitations and Doom's pace and variety, the required model for enemy detection needs to be extremely fast while maintaining the accuracy and precision. When it comes to accuracy, the first model which comes to mind is YOLO, standing for you only look once, one of the most popular object detection systems. The most recent release of YOLO, V5, has been questioned as to the actual improvements over the previous release, V4. So I decided to try out both. To train an accurate object detection model, you usually need around hundreds and sometimes more than a thousand images for each class you want to detect. Since training a model to detect all 27 enemy types in the game would require thousands of images, I decided to only use the first three enemies introduced in the game, zombies, imps, and possessed soldiers. Even then, I still gathered 440 images, which only took two days of painstaking work to gather and manually label, as required by YOLO, all 440 images. This pain turned into joy, because I'm not entirely sure you can be a Doom fan without already being a masochist. Once this data was organized, I used it to train both a YOLO v5 model and a YOLO v4 scale model. The process for this was quite lengthy and difficult due to the use of the PyTorch framework with both. I'm pretty sure that I finished a playthrough of Eternal in less time than it took me to properly install PyTorch on Windows with GPU support. Out of eventual frustration, I decided to use Google Colab rather than local training with the help of online RoboFlow tools. The small YOLO v5 model was definitely the better choice than the cross-stage partial YOLO v4 scaled model. While there wasn't as much accuracy, the model being uh, nearly 30 times smaller fit the requirement better. Although to actually run the model locally to use with aimbot, I had to finish setting up PyTorch. Almost 10 installation configurations, which take a while, later. Object detection with YOLO v5 and PyTorch Hub finally worked for me. The next line of business was capturing screen data in Python and programming the aimbot itself. With the help of OpenCV and PyAutoGUI, this only took about 30 minutes. I don't have a capture card, so I use the MSS library to consistently capture screenshots of the monitor. Similar to the aimbot shown in the other video, you can actually specify which area of the screen you want to be capturing to possibly improve speed or your experience. Each screenshot is then inputted as a frame to the YOLO v5 model, which gets the bounding box location of each enemy on screen. Unlike the other aimbot, pose estimation isn't really used here, rather the center of the bounding box is calculated for the cursor to be aimed at. If you want the tool to be more like an aim assist than a bot, you can specify how sensitive you want the cursor movement to be with Pi Auto GUI. Ah ah ah. Moving the cursor in game isn't actually as simple as the usual Pi Auto GUI movement functions. Pi Auto GUI uses an older function called Mouse Event for mouse simulations, which has more recently been superseded by the new uh, newer Windows Send Input function. For some more information, I recommend checking out this video and the PyDirect input library. PyDirect input is a similar module to PyAuto GUI, however it uses the more recent direct input Windows API and send input function to simulate inputs, which I, which I definitely recommend if you're simulating mouse inputs in games especially. For me though, neither of them really worked. Using PyWin32 to access Windows APIs, I didn't need to send input function, 
because the mouse event function was just about the only thing that actually moved the cursor in Doom. To make it accurate, you just need to disable enhanced pointer precision in the control panel. Unlike Pyroto GUI, the solution uh, doesn't use Pi screening to set how fast you want the mouse movement to be. This means that the aimbot can only snap to the target, which isn't always accurate as you'll see in the gameplay footage. Oftentimes, there are multiple enemies on screen, so there's logic to prioritize which enemy to target. Using the area of the bounding box, you can find which demon is closest to the player or the slayer, and target it first. For demons with complex weaknesses, the tool would likely be useless, so I only really tested it out with the first few encounters in the first campaign mission. Unlike the previous snippet I showed, gameplay isn't actually changed at all. You'll still feel like you're playing the game without any weird colors or bounding boxes or lines. The weird footage you're seeing here is just output video that was written with OpenCV to visualize what's actually happening. Here's how it looks in-game if my PC doesn't die. As you saw there, Doom Eternal definitely inflicted more pain on the aimbot than the aimbot inflicted on it. In such a fluid game, inaccuracies and false positives, when the model classifies a non-enemy as an enemy, can often lead to death. The snap to target functionality doesn't exactly help with this either. However, this is a showcase of what's possible put together in just a week. If a more accurate model was trained with more data for even longer, average precision would be off the charts, and aimbots like these can wreak havoc in competitive games. With some more time to fine-tune mouse movement, AI and ML can do what they're supposed to do, assist humans. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll take a look. And until next time, see ya.